Hello and welcome to Chess Please. My name is Andy and today I wanted to take you through 10 chess terms which are a little bit off the beaten track but I really just think they're pretty cool. Um, I am a big fan of exotic and uncommon vocabulary and a big fan of chess as well so these are right in the intersection of what really gets me going uh, in a normal human way. Let's jump right in shall we? So, number one is garde, garde, a French term if you couldn't tell by my flawless pronunciation. Garde is a term that, this isn't so much a weird term but very much a chess term, that has kind of gone out of style but apparently it's what you used to say if you put your opponent in check but not their king, if you checked or attacked their queen you would say garde or however you pronounce it. Um, basically like protect the queen um, and uh, yeah I thought that was pretty cool and even though I only ever really play uh, digital chess and I don't ever have to say check I'm gonna start saying garde. garde. Number two is Zugzwang. Zugzwang. Uh, as you can probably tell again it is a German word um, and it is based on the principle whereby you don't have a move to make or a move available that benefits you so by moving in any way or any direction you are actually harming your chances um, it is an uncomfortable position to be in um, whereby you have to generally it's with, with the king where you force your king into a dangerous position because it's your go you have to move and you have no moves available that don't harm your position Zugzwang. lovely word Next one staying in Germany is Luft. Luft. So Luft comes from the German word for air, I think. Lufthansa, that makes sense. Um, and what it means is when you have a castled king and he's behind his three little row of pawns uh, and you're being threatened for back rank mate, I know I've fallen fell to it many, many times. Luft is when you open up one of those pawns. You move one of those pawns, either one or two spaces, to give your king that air or luft that's term number three term number four is tabia so tabia is a arabic term that is uh, generally thought to mean around kind of like the opening setup what it kind of refers to specifically the tabia is once the opening is played out i.e the book or theory moves are played out and you reach a position that is very familiar Tabia refers to the departure point from that point on. So where you start moving away from theory and into just some earnest thinky-poo chess. That's a, that's not the term. Into the more creative, crafty, uh, non-theory chess. That is a tabia, that departure point. Our next word, number five, is a double trouble two for one because they both mean the same thing but both are used in chess and both are from different languages so intermezzo which is an italian word and let me just look at this one zwischenzug no zwischenzug 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 and intermezzo intermezzo is the italian word for intermediate um, and Zwischenzug, I think, actually refers to intermediate train because that's what it said when I put it into Google Translate. Translate. Uh, Google Translate. Um, and what this refers to is an intermediate move. And it's basically when you are being attacked or a piece of yours is about to be taken, oftentimes the most intuitive or natural thing to do is to move that piece being attacked or in threat of being taken. Um, but an intermediate move or intermezzo or zwischenzug, zwischenzug uh, move is whereby you can do something in the interim, i.e. maybe you can get your piece out of trouble with a check, you can check with another piece, or you can create a bigger threat with another piece. A lot of this refers to using tempo or stealing back tempo. If you don't know what tempo is, check out my other video on tempo, which I'll put in a card here. I hope, if I can figure out 
how to do that. Our next term is an English term, which is booking a trend for this list. Um, and it's one that I had not come across. It is ply, apply. So if you play chess quite a lot, you're probably pretty familiar with this, but I didn't hear this until like years and years into playing chess. Apply is a move, but uh, a move in how kind of we would think about it, but actually a move in chess refers to your move and the opponent's move. Both of those parts equal one move, one ply. So each movement of a piece is one ply, two plies equal a move. Did not know that, cool little word. Mm, actually, Homer, that's just one. See, each push-up includes both an up part and a down part. <laughs> so our next word and number eight on the list is another English word, and it's an English word that means something else, but is used really nicely in chess, which is why it's on this list, and it is an octopus. So an octopus is a term, again, I wasn't familiar with in chess. It refers to a knight that is in a safe point in the middle of the board, i.e. on an outpost square or else just generally in the middle of the board because it goes from being that kind of like jumpy horsey piece to this eight tentacled monster that controls all of the center of the board. So that's why they say get your knights in the center and transform or transmogrify your knight or your horse into an octopus. That's the theory. That's what happens. Uh, so octopus, a knight in the middle of the board with eight squares under its control. Uh, number nine isn't a fancy word or anything like that, but uh, I just thought it's fun, fun to say, and that is a family fork. A family fork is when you fork the king and the queen. More formally known, but way less fun as a royal fork. Um, but I don't know, family fork, it sounds like a meal deal from KFC or other restaurants that you might eat with a fork, uh, which wouldn't be KFC, of course. But uh, family fork, when you fork the king and the queen. And our last term of this list of 10, it's another German term, and it is Sitzfleisch. Sitzfleisch. Um, so when I plugged Sitzfleisch into uh, Google Translate, it came up with a beautiful combination of words. Seat meat. Seat meat. Just horrific. Just a terrible combination of words. Um, and what Sitzfleisch refers to is the ability to sit still. Now, initially, I understood this to be in like a chess tournament or when you're in a big chess hall, the ability to actually just sit at the board and look at it and analyze it. Um, I have seen other things online that actually refer to it as the ability to sit still when under pressure or when under uh, like being attacked, like don't automatically react and take that piece back. Um, but the seat meat thing uh, leads me to believe that it's more so on the uh, sitting down in your chair during a tournament. Okay, so those were 10 chess terms that I just think are really cool. Um, that was the only criteria for this list. They're kind of cool concepts and they're really neatly encapsulated in the word. Sometimes the words just sound cool um, from different languages, everything like that. Um, and it just encapsulates a lot of the depth of chess that I really, really love um, as I'm getting more and more into the game. Um, and I hope you found them interesting too. This is Chess Please. My name is Andy. If you liked this kind of content, feel free to let me know in the comments. Let me know what your favorite word was. If there's any other words I might have missed out, which are also cool. There are tons. I think there's actually material enough for a couple more videos like this, if you want them. Um, do let me know. Um, and if you did have a good time, feel free to stick around and hit that subscribe button. I try to upload chess videos every single week. Um, and if not, just drop us a quick like if you had a good time really helps us get the channel out in front of more people. That is all for today, folks. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you have a wonderful day. Sitzfleisch. Sitzfleisch.